Good morning and God bless you. We thank you for joining us here at the Christ Centered Missionary Baptist Church Worship Service on this the last Sunday of April, April 25th, 2021. Let us prepare to worship the Lord together. Let's pray. Lord our God, we thank you. God, you've been so good to us. We thank you for keeping us all the week long. And God, as we go towards praising you, we pray that you will bless this time of service and worship. God, we thank you for opportunity. Bless the preached word. Bless those that receive it, that they may be convicted to be saved. God, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Our announcements, we want to keep in mind that every Tuesday night, Tuesday night, this Tuesday at 7 p.m., we will continue our Bible study in the book, Experiencing God. We come together with us each Tuesday night at 7 p.m. for Bible study and prayer. For all prayer requests, please email us ccmbc89 at gmail.com Invite someone to Bible study. We want to pray and study with you. Praise God. Hallelujah. We are preparing to go back to church. Amen. On Mother's Day, May the 9th, we will worship in the sanctuary. We will worship in the sanctuary on May the 9th for all who feel comfortable to come and worship together. Please wear your mats. There are also new worship times beginning on Sunday, May the 9th. Sunday school will take place at 8.30 a.m. followed by worship at 9 a.m. Please pay attention to our new worship times of 8.30 Sunday School and 9 a.m. worship starting on Sunday, Mother's Day, May the 9th, 2021. We look forward to worshiping with you. As we transcend to the Word of God, we ask that you would check and place your phone on mute. Please place your phone on mute during the time of the preached word. Let us now go to the word of God. Good morning. I want to talk to you from the theme, trust in God's plan. Trust in God's plan. And we want to read the book of Jeremiah, the 29th chapter, the 10th through the 14th verse. Jeremiah 29, 10 through 14. And it says, For thus saith the Lord, that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you, in causing you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then shall ye call upon me, Ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And ye shall seek me, and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. And I will be found of you, saith the Lord, and I will turn away your captivity. And I will gather you from all the nations, and from all the places whither I have driven you, saith the Lord. And I will bring you again into the place whence I caused you to be carried away captive. I want to talk and encourage others to trust in God's plan. God delivers a word by way of Jeremiah to the people in exile, to the people in captivity. God tells the people to have hope in the good word that God has given them. Amen. God teaches the people that you have got to be able to stand and trust his promises. Amen. God tells the people 
that not only are you to trust in the plan, but you ought have expectation in the end of the plan as God leads. As in other words, as God has promised the people, he tells them to believe and trust in his word. And he tells them to diligently seek him for an expected end. Amen. God is trying to get the people to believe and trust in who God is. Amen. Uh, uh, God takes the time, amen, if you read in the scripture, to explain that there are many false prophets, even amongst the people of exile, even amongst those that are captive. But even though there are false people, pro false prophets, or false word, God says in verse 10 that they ought be able to believe and trust in this good word. Oh my God. God's word is good. God gives all of us uh, a promise. When God speaks into your life, when God gives you a promise, it is a good word. Amen. There are plenty of other words amongst us. There's plenty of other false prophets amongst us, the people that we associate with, even our loved ones the people who we see every day, even circumstances. There are circumstances and people that place us in a falsivity of what we are seen as God. But, but we ought to be able to have a spirit of discernment and be able to discern that those people and circumstances that are not of God. If it is not of God, we ought not trust it. If it is not of God, we ought not believe or receive it as a good word. Oh my God, you ought to stop trusting those that you affiliate yourself with that are not of God. You ought to stop trusting the circumstances around you that are not of God. If it don't feel good, if it don't uh, uh, sound good, if it does not reveal unto you the promise that God gave you or be able to exemplify that fact, don't trust it. Amen. God tells the people that, 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 that his word is good word and that even in the midst of captivity, they can expect him to move. Oh my God, today. Oh my God, I just said something right there. Even in the midst of your storm, even in the midst of your exile, even in the midst of your hard and troubled times, you all expect God to move. You want to know how you can expect God to move? Because God already promised you that he would move. God already promised you that he would deliver you. God already promised you that he would make a way out of no way. God already promised you that he would bring you out. And all those promises that God gave you is good word, <laughs> is good promises. Uh, it is true stuff. It is uh, uh, God already gives us the affirmation that is true, even in our own testimonies. In other words, the testimonies that we've had in the past, the words, the, the way that God brought us out in the past, uh, it is already good ground to believe and trust in him. We just have to believe in God. We have to believe in God's word. We have to believe and trust God's plan. Amen. My God, my God. Uh, uh, in verse 11, he says, I know, I know, I already know what plans I have for you. Amen. And you know what, my brothers and sisters, we have got to have trust, confidence, and faith that God already knows. In these first few uh, uh, scriptures, God gives the people in exile a time expectation. He explains to them to have discernment. 
the situation that he knows that he sees them in. He describes that. And he also tells them, know that he knows. Oh my God, know that he knows what he's doing. You, I know it's trivial. I know it, might, it may sound small. I know it may sound cliche. But every now and then, we must remind ourselves that God knows what God is doing. In other words, we ought to have trust and confidence in the fact that God sees us, that God knows our situation, that God uh, uh, can hear our prayers. That leads me to verse 12. Verse 12 in the Message Bible says uh, in, in Jeremiah 29, 12, when you call on me, when you come and pray to me, I'll listen, amen. And then God goes on to tell the people by way they should beseech him, uh, by way they should demonstrate their faith. Uh, he says in verse 13 for them to come and seek him with all of their heart, with all of their belief, all of their trust within themselves should be with God. Oh, I'm talking to somebody, I don't know, who you are, but you've got to take everything that you have, everything that you are about, and trust and believe in God right now, today. In spite of what's going on in your situation, you ought to know that as you pray to him, he listens. As you seek him in fasting, he sees you. As you read his word, he knows what it is that you're going through. He knows that you are seeking him for understanding, for clarity, for direction. And you ought know that as you seek him, God knows what God is doing. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. As you're, as you're living your life, as you're living your life, even through the storm, you ought to just say that to yourself. I know God knows what he's doing. <laughs> you may not understand it, but know that God knows uh, what you're doing. Know that God understands. Uh, know that your expected end uh, is your beginning. Oh my God. Uh, notice verse 11 says that as you know that he knows what he's doing, you all know that as God is moving, there's an expectation of an end which could be your beginning because every time God blesses you, it lifts up your faith. It lifts up your trust. It lifts up your hope. It should take you to another spiritual level. Why? Because God is real. God has blessed you. God has kept you. Uh, amen. That leads me to this point. The very fact that within uh, this promise that God gives the people to exile, he demonstrates to them that as they follow his plan, as they follow his direction. It's very detailed. There's a detailed reason for him to give them the exact number of years that he it will take for him to move, that in 70 years. Amen. It seems 70 seems like a long time. But this time that God gives to them is God's timing. And God is trying to teach the people to wait and know that after that 70th year, God will move. And that's the appointed time that God has declared that he will provide. Because in God's timing, within God's timing, he is keeping us. He is protecting us. He is giving us comfort. He, we should all have the assurance to know that God will move when God is ready to move. Oh my God today. Because when we want God to move, when we are in our own timing, we have a tendency to mess things up. But as we're waiting, we ought be assured that God sees and knows uh, what it is that we're going through. Oh my God, oh my God, hallelujah today. As we're waiting, as we're trusting, as we're believing, as we're having faith, we ought have assurance to know that God sees and knows what it is that we're going through. Because out of waiting on him, he's going to give us 
and expect it in. Oh, thank you, Jesus. He's going to give us deliverance. He's going to bring us out. He's going to comfort us. He's going to shield us within that time of waiting. As long as we diligently seek him, as long as we are praying unto him, we are demonstrating to him our willingness and our ability to have faith. You all put your faith and trust in God today. You all diligently seek his face. You all diligently pray him, pray to him. And I want to tell somebody today that as you pray, pray to him as you know that he hears and and is acknowledging your prayer. Oh my God. Oh my God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. And so we must continue to trust that God hears, sees, and knows, and, uh, 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 and, and speaks to us, and is right there with us, even in the midst of a captive in an exile situation. You got to remember that the, these people, in the midst of their captivity, God is telling them to trust. In the midst of their storm, God is telling them to be led by their faith and their hope. <coughs> and that in which he sent to them by way of Jeremiah, amen. Because God God told them, let me, this is how awesome God is. God told them that if they wait, if they trust in the plan, he's going to bring them back in the very place that was at one time against him. All they have to do is trust in the plan. The plan may not always make sense to us, but God will make it make sense in the end. Oh my God. It may not make sense to you right now in what you're going through, but God will make it make sense in the end. All we have to do is have hope and have trust and faith that the outcome will be from God. That's key right there. We may not want to understand or see the outcome, but we have to trust. We have to have hope. We have to have faith that the outcome would be of God. Oh, and I'm a witness today that God has not failed us yet. Amen. Especially when we see no way, especially when we see no path, we ought be able to to jump on God's path, on God's direction. When I'll say that again. When we see no way out, when we see no direct path out of that situation, we have got to trust the path that God has us on. Because after all, if we trust him, if we seek him with all that we are and all that we believe, we then know for ourselves that it's God that will bring us out. It's God that would deliver him. And as a matter of fact, we ought to expect that fact that as he lead us, as God directs us, he will give us an expected end. And we ought to just get ready to glorify him. How many of you out there know that he's a deliverer? How many of you out there know that he's a healer? How many of you out there know can call witness to the time that he healed, that he delivered you, that he brought you out, that you took him from his word and God made his word known. And the word was enough for you to feast on the fact that God is a healer, a deliverer. Amen. He's a way maker. All we have to do is trust in his word. Trust on his promise. Stand on his promise. Trust in the plan. We may not be uh, as we're going through the, oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. As we're going through the plan, the plan uh, may not always feel good as we're going through it. The plan may not always make sense, as I said before. But we have got to know that in the midst of the plan, in the midst of our guidance, in the midst of our direction, the God that we serve is with us. Amen. The only true God, a God of good circumstance, a God of good word. God is with us. All we have to do is follow God's plan, is to go 
with God. It's to let God move. Let God do as God does. I'll say that again. We got to have sense enough and patience enough to be able to allow God to do as God does. You may not have patience, but no, just like he came through for you on last week, just like he came through for you on last year, just like he came through for you 10 years ago, know that God's promises are real. Know that God's promises are real. All you have to do is follow the Lord's plan for your life. All you have to do is trust in God's promises. All you have to do to, is to know that God has not failed you yet. God has not failed you yet. I don't know a God who fails us. And if God, oh, thank you, Lord. If God has failed you, you ought to ask yourself that moment or person that failed you, that you thought was God, ask yourself, was it of God? Or was it a false prophet? Was it a false pretense? Did you have patience to wait on his, on his plan in the time that you were failed? Or did you rush things through outside of God's timing and failed yourself? God is very specific, detailed in his plan for our life. All we have to do is follow the plan. God will not fail us. All we have to do is know that the plan is good for us and to trust that the plan that God has for us is a plan that is of God. And it is because it is of him, he will not lead us astray. Oh, thank you, God. There's somebody that need to know that today. Because the plan is of God, he will not lead us astray. You know, the awesome thing about this scripture is the fact that God's plan was so awesome that these people were protected and shielded and kept from the enemy. And when the enemy was wiped out, they were able to walk in the place that God delivered them for in safety. And there are some times in which as we're going through our storm, it may not feel good. It may not, uh, we may ourselves be curious as to how it's going to happen, how it's going to take place. It may give us anxiety. It may not uh, be the best experience for us, but we have got to be able to trust that the outcome is of God and that he will give us peace. He will give us comfort. He will give us a peace of mind in the end. And it will feel good. We just have to trust God's plan for our life. There's somebody out there today that has not yet accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior. Listen, it is time out for you to avoid the call that God has on your life to live better, to be better, to do better. I just want to see you saved. Christ Center Baptist Church want to see you saved and delivered and part of the church family. Stop avoiding church. Come to Jesus as the old folks say, just now. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. You can join Christ City Missionary Baptist Church. We're located at 22979 Maud Avenue in Hayward, California. You can phone us at 510-925-3113. Send us an email, ccmbc89 at gmail.com. Or send us, message us on our website. We want to hear from you. We would love to have you a part of the family of God. God bless you. If you enjoyed this worship, share it.
You may go to our Facebook or YouTube page and share this message. Will you support the ministry? You're welcome to support our ministry with your offering or donation by donating online at www.ccmbc89.org or send an offering or donation to the church. Christ Center Missionary Baptist Church is located at 22979 Maud Avenue in Hayward, California. 94541. That's all for now. Remember, we're praying for you and we are keeping you in loving care. As always, we ask, until next time, keep the faith.